Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. This week, we're going to talk about wall stencils, and we'd like to thank Tim Singh for a four-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts. Historians say the earliest type of wall stencil dates back to around 30,000 BC, where cave artists would use their hand as a stencil and blow crushed pigment around it to show off the shape of their hand. Hmm. The ancient Egyptians used stencils to decorate tombs, And around 100 A.D., Chinese artists developed paper stencils to decorate cloth. In the late 1700s and early 1800s in the U.S., artists would use stencils to decorate walls in people's homes because of the high cost of wallpaper. Hmm. Let's start off with what is a wall stencil. Okay. So the most common type of stencils are made from plastic and have areas cut out to form shapes or letters, Mm -hmm. and you would tape this to the wall and then use a brush or roller to paint the design onto the wall. Painter's tape? And you Right. Yeah, you'd use a painter's tape to hold it in place. And it's pretty amazing how many designs are available. With one wall stencil, you can fill a wall with patterns so you can get the look of wallpaper and Mm. use any color to match or complement your decor. Right. You can use a stencil to create a decorative backsplash in the kitchen. You can make a border at the ceiling or above chair rail on the underside of arched openings or above a baseboard. So it's pretty versatile. Right. You can use it around windows or doors. Right, exactly. Yeah, I saw like around windows where they had like vines draping down from them. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool looking. I saw one kid's room that had mushrooms coming up from the baseboard. And another room had multicolored flowers all around the room coming up from the baseboard. You can get stencils for kids' rooms that have dinosaurs, trains, moons. Vampire bats. Yes, I'm sure every kid would love that. (laughs) I saw a growth chart that looked pretty cool and stencils for chalkboard paint. It's nice. Stenciled letters come in a variety of sizes and fonts, so you can create words on your wall. And there are wall quote stencils. One I saw was, don't be dumb today. Mm. You can use a stencil to create the look of artwork rather than a picture or a painting. Or you can have an accent, like a small group of flowers, vines, or a tree. Right. (laughs) Right, exactly. Let's talk about the advantages of stenciling. So compared to wallpaper, it's going to be less expensive. You can buy one stencil and use it over and over. And with some patterns, it's going to be easier to stencil compared to putting up wallpaper. Mm -hmm. And you can pick the exact colors you want. Stencils are good for humid areas like a kitchen or a bathroom where it could be a problem for some wallpaper. Right. What are the disadvantages? One of the biggest problems is putting too much paint on your brush or roller cover and forcing paint under the stencil. Mm, which it bleeds through. Right, yeah, it's going to ruin the look of your design. And if you're doing full walls and have a complex design that has to set over the edge of the area you just painted, it can be very tedious and time-consuming. Before you put the stencil to that next area, you have to wait till the paint dries. Mm. Corners are difficult with patterns that have to be connected, You're going to have to bend the stencil or cut it for the corners after you finish all the full patterns. Mm, Tricky. So it can be difficult around windows and doors, too. A couple decorators suggested getting stencils like leaf and flower shapes that you put randomly on the wall so it can be finished faster and there's less chance of damaging the painted area that you just finished. They Mm -hmm. say it's the best for beginners to get a feel for stencils. So this isn't a fast project. For some of these complex designs, yeah, it can be very time-consuming. I spoke to Stencil Revolution. They're a family-run business that makes wall stencils. They said stencils are an affordable way to get the look of designer wallpaper for a fraction of the cost. Mm -hmm. And in the future, if you want to change the look, you just paint right over it, which is much easier than removing wallpaper. Right. Stenciling a full wall can actually take longer than wallpaper, depending on the design and the size of the stencil or stencils. But if you use a stencil to create a border or accents just to change the look of a wall, it can be much easier and faster. Mm -hmm. 
They recommend prepping the wall first by washing it down with a 50-50 solution of water and vinegar to remove dirt and oils from the wall, and that's going to help the paint stick better. And the key to getting a great look with your paint is using a technique called dry brushing, which means you load up your paintbrush or roller with a small amount of paint, and then you remove excess paint by rolling it or brushing it onto a paper towel or rag. So most of the paint is removed, the brush or roller should be almost dry. They say you want to build up the paint slowly through the stencil in layers to get a clean image without bleeding under the stencil, or use a light layer of paint to get a weathered look, and then it's going to be easier to cover in the future if you want to. Right. They said to embrace your inner artist and don't be too critical. The look of stenciling should be a hand-painted finish which will have small imperfections. Right. Anyone looking at your finished work will be drawn to the decorative design and the colors, not any small flaws. And if you're using a stencil that repeats, use a level to align the stencil so you get a professional look and the design isn't on an angle. Yeah. And you can check out Stencil Revolution at stencilrevolution.com. It's S T E N C I L R-E-V-O-L-U-T-I-O-N dot com. What type of tools do you need besides a stencil? So from the companies I looked at, they recommended a stencil brush and a small 4-inch foam roller. A stencil brush? It's a brush with bristles in a circular shape, and it has a flat end. So you're just tapping or pressing the flat end of the bristles into the open areas of the stencils, ah. and that's going to help prevent it from bleeding paint under the stencil. And a small foam roller, you'd want to use that with light pressure, and that's going to help you cover large areas faster. Mm -hmm. You're going to need a paint tray, large paper plates, or plastic plates to hold your paint, and then you're going to want to remove the excess paint off your brush or roller with a tray another plate or rag or paper towel so there's very little paint on your applicator. Ah. You'll use painter's tape to hold the stencil to the wall. A delicate surface painter's tape is good to prevent damage to your wall. And if you have to tape over an area you just painted, 3M and frog tape both have delicate surface painter's tape. Mm -hmm. If you have a large detailed stencil with a lot of openings, some companies suggest using a repositionable spray adhesive on the back of the stencil to hold it in place, along with painter's tape on the edges. Mm -hmm. For most plastic stencils, you shouldn't need a spray adhesive, and it can leave some residue on the wall. You can use the eraser end of a pencil or something similar to help hold an area you're painting to the wall if you think it might lift up. Okay. For stencils that will be used to create the look of wallpaper and need to be level, you can get a lightweight clip-on level, or you can use a small level on the stencil, or use the level to mark the wall with a pencil. That was a lot of ores. <laughs> Some top-rated levels come from Johnson Levels, J-O-H-N-S-O-N, -S Empire, E-M-P-I-R-E, Hultaforce, H-U-L-T-A-F-O-R-S, and Klein Tools, K-L-E-I-N, capital T-O-O-L-S. A tape measure is handy to space the patterns for some stencils, mm -hmm. and some top-rated tape measures come from Crescent, C-R-E-S-C-E-N-T, Klein Tools, Milwaukee, Stanley, and DeWalt. Cool. If you're stenciling into corners, the ceiling, baseboards, or round windows, you can use a couple artist brushes to extend the paint so it looks finished. Because when you bend a stencil, you don't want to bend it at a 90 degree angle. So where it starts to lift off the wall, you're only going to paint up to where it's flat against the wall. And then you'll remove your stencil and you can continue that line with an artist brush. Right. What type of paint should you use? You can use any type of interior water-based latex paint. For designs where you're just going to be using a small amount of paint, there are stencil creams and stencil paints that you can get at a craft store, and mm. they come in small containers. Okay. For large areas, a paint with a flat or matte finish is going to dry faster, and it's going to be easier to blend and touch up than a paint with a higher sheen. Really? And if you're repainting your walls before you apply your stencil designs, 
use a flat or matte finish, the stencil paint is going to stick better to it and it's going to reduce the chance of bleeding. Interesting. To stencil a full wall, you would measure the width and figure out how the pattern is going to fit the wall and where you want to start. If you have a stencil with a repeating pattern, you're going to have marks or shapes so you can line up the stencil as you move it down or across. Mm -hmm. And you're going to use a level to make sure the stencil is level before you start painting. Use painter's tape on the edges to hold the stencil in place. Right. Put very little paint on your brush or roller and offload the excess onto paper towels or rags, a paper plate, or some surface so there's very little paint left on the brush or roller. Mm -hmm. With a stencil brush, you're going to tap or dab the end of the brush over the openings to cover the wall. Some people recommend a light swirling motion. With a roller, you're going to use light pressure. And once the stencil is covered, remove it immediately. Okay. Some stencils are designed so you can use multiple colors with one stencil, and some use two or more stencils to create the design and for each color. With multiple overlays, they're usually going to have small holes in the corner that you'll use to mark the wall with a pencil. Once one color is finished, you would let it dry, remove that first stencil, then use the marks on the wall to line up the next stencil for the next color hmm. and that part of the design. Cool. I spoke to wall-to-wall -to -wall stencils about doing full walls and extending the stencil onto the adjoining wall. They recommended laying out your design and do all the full stencil painting first, mm -hmm. then bend the stencils into the corners and tape off the other wall to prevent getting paint onto it, right. or cut the stencil for the end of the wall to finish it. So you can buy two stencils and cut one okay. for the corners. They recommend taping off the ceiling and baseboards, and if you have to bend the stencil, work as close as possible then pull off the stencil and finish the design into the ceiling or baseboard with an artist brush. Mm -hmm. And you can check out wall-to-wall -wall stencils at wall-to-wallstencils.com. It's W-A-L-L-T-O-W-A-L-L-S-T-E-N-C-I-L-S dot com. Follow the manufacturer's instructions for cleaning your stencil. Stencil Revolution recommends for water-based latex paint, run the stencil under warm water and lightly scrub it with a dish brush. Focus on the paint around the edges of the graphic. Mm -hmm. If the paint is fully dry on your stencil, soak it in warm, soapy water for a few hours or overnight, and then lightly scrub it with a dish brush. If you're storing your stencils, store them flat. If you have multiple stencils, Stack them separated with paper between each stencil. Cool. Some sites you can check out online with wall stencils, Stencil Revolution, Wall-to-Wall -wall Stencils, Stencils Lab, it's S-T-E-N-C-I-L-S, capital L-A-B, Oak Lane Studio, O-A-K, capital L-A-N-E, capital S-T-U-D-I-O, Royal Design Studio, R-O-Y-A-L, capital D-E-S-I-G-N, capital S-T-U-D-I-O, and Cutting Edge Stencils, C-U-T-T-I-N-G, capital E-D-G-E, -E, capital S-T-N-C-I-L-S. -S. Do you have anything else to add? We'd like to thank Stencil Revolution and Wall-to-Wall -wall Stencils for helping us with this episode. And stencil designs that are used as an accent or stencils that don't have a connected design are the easiest for beginners. Don't over-apply the paint. You want to put it on very dry for the best results. This is definitely something you should shop for online. We went to a couple home centers this week and they didn't have any. Right. We ended up at a craft <laughs> store. Yeah. They had some, but not well, a big selection. Well, it's funny. The home centers have them, but you can only check them out online. Right. Let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcast app. If you enjoyed it, please give us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. 
You can download our ebooks, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know, books 1 through 15 on Amazon. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five-star rating and review. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. You can follow Cindy on Twitter at fixitcohost. And you can follow us on Instagram, Fix It Home Improvement. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week. Thank you.